All the seats are written VVIP. So kindly feel welcome. And our hero is here, our guest of the day works in. <laughs> and our vice chancellor, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki is also here. Our deputy vice chancellor, Rio Professor Vincent Onyuera. And our deputy vice chancellor, FPND, Professor Damiana Kieti is also here. Ladies and gentlemen, without waiting any longer, I would like us to stand for the national anthem. and psychological studies to come and give us a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Father and our God, we come to you this afternoon as the Faith Name family to praise, worship, and adore you. We thank you for accepting us as your son. Therefore, this afternoon, as we begin this prestigious academic event, presided upon by your own Professor Caroline Mabando, we are certain that you are with us. Speak to us through her. Teach us through her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to welcome us all to this very important event, the inaugural lecture of, of Professor Caroline Omolando, Professor of Educational Media and Technology. Let's uh, give a shout out welcome to the day. I, I, I have a song that I really loved and because people are clapping as if they've not had lunch, I understand you may not have had lunch because you are very anxious. So there's this song we all know in nursery school. When I was a teacher, a teacher, a teacher, when I was a teacher, a teacher was I, then you'll do, it was this way, and that way, and this way, and that way. When I was a teacher, a teacher was I. Then we'll go to, when I was a lecturer, a lecturer, a lecturer. When I was a lecturer, a lecturer was I. It was this way, and that way, and this way, and that way. When I was a lecturer, a lecturer was I. Then when I was a professor, a professor, a professor, when I was a professor, a professor was I. It was this way, <laughs> that way, and this way. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's 
that when I these mark those books and this way and that way when I was a teacher a teacher was I when I was a lecturer a lecturer a lecturer was I was a lecturer a lecturer was I if I was to read it was this way and that way and this way and that way when I was a lecturer a lecturer was I then now when I was a professor, a professor, a professor, when I was a professor, a professor was I. Let's do research. It was this way and that way and this way and that way. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a seat. So, uh, powers to read. We, many of us have the power to read, but uh, we are not yet researching like professor. When you start researching as a professor, you will have those glasses, we say glasses for old people, where the lower part you have to do like this and like that. Right? Events to take place today at the university. We'd also like to uh, to recognize the presence Professor of Vincent Professor Vincent, Vincent Oliveira, the DDC Research Innovation and Outreach, for, and that is where this event is honored to be taking place today. And we'd also like to recognize the presence of the DDC Finance Planning and Development, Professor Damiana Kieti, who has funded this event. So ladies and gentlemen, let's clap for them. We'd also like to recognize the presence of a very esteemed guests uh, in the hall. Uh, we'd like to recognize the presence of Professor Peter Barasa, Vice Chancellor at Lupe University. We'd also like to recognize the presence of Professor Ongondo, the head and the owner, current owner, KICD. Yeah, the CBC curriculum is in his hand, so we will deliver. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd also like to appreciate the presence of family members who are here today to celebrate this very important event with us and with Professor Caroline Omolando. Can the family members just stand up and wave? We'd like to say she is yours, but she is ours too. So thank you very much for being here to appreciate the event. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to honor the presence of the Senate, the UMB, and all the other members of the faculty who are in the room. But before I call the next speaker, I'd like to uh, request our guests from University of South Africa to stand and wave to us. UNISA. In our culture, we say when you come to visit, when visitors are, when we are eating, then you gossip about us nicely. So you have come to visit us when we are eating. This is a very important event. It is the inaugural lecture for Professor Caroline Molando, but also to KCA University. So we welcome you and we really appreciate your presence. On that note, I'd like to invite Dr. Priscilla Gashigi, the Dean School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences, the school from where our very important chief guest resides. Thank you. Professor Carolino Murando, our chief guest today, our vice chancellor and CEO, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki, the vice chancellor, Desta University, Professor Laba Nayulo, the Vice Chancellor, Alupe University, Professor Peter Barasa, our Deputy Vice Chancellors, Professor Bagakas, uh, Academic and Students Affairs, Professor Damiana, Finance, Planning and Development, Professor Onyuera, Research, Innovation and Outreach, Professor Charles Ongondo, Director and CEO, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, 
Ambassador Simon Nabukwesi, Deputy Commandant and Senior Directing Staff and the National Defense College, uh, Dr. Siriaka, the Dean, School of Education, Embu University, the Senior Administrative Staff in other universities represented here, other distinguished guests, KCA University staff, a very good afternoon to us all. It is, it is with great pressure and honor that I stand here today as the Dean of the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences to welcome you all as we witness the first full professor to be appointed in a school at KCA University, Professor Caroline Omurando, as she delivers her inaugural lecture. It is with great delight to mention that Professor Omulando is housed in the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences, KCA University. Indeed, this event marks a significant milestone in not only Professor Omulando's academic journey, but also for the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences and the entire KCA fraternity. Today, we have the privilege of drinking from the deep well of a great academician as she lets us into her profound knowledge, innovative ideas, creative and impactful research. For the short period that Professor Omrando has been in KCA University, we can acknowledge that she is a lady of excellence and wavering commitment and is constantly in a relentless pursuit of academic perfectionism and I am sure that this will feature in her lecture. I therefore invite you to this important event as I welcome Professor Onyuera, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Research, Innovation and Outreach to deliver his remarks. Thank you. The guest of honor this afternoon, Professor Caroline Omulando and your family, our chief host, the Vice Chancellor KCA University, Professor I.C. Wakindiki, the Vice Chancellor of Alupe University, mentor to Professor Omulando, Professor Baraza, the CEO and director of KICD, my friend, Professor Ongondo, my colleague, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Kieti, Professor Joshua Bagakas, the DVC Academic and Affairs in absentia, members of the university management, members of the university senate. I would really like to acknowledge the presence of our visiting team from UNISA, led by the Executive Dean of Graduate Studies, Professor Tennyson. Let's give them another round of applause, please. <laughs> Our distinguished students, the friends of uh, Professor Mulando, members of the university community, all protocols respectfully observed. Good afternoon. I'm Jambo. Today is a great day. Uh, our chief host and our chief guest, I am very happy. I'm very, very delighted. As the DVC in charge of research, innovation, and outreach, I feel very encouraged and I feel very happy that we are able to deliver the first ever professorial inaugural lecture when we are celebrating KCA at 10 since we were chartered. I want to congratulate the School of Education for being the pioneering school in this event. And I'm sure my deans, my other deans, you are taking notes. Yours is coming next. Our chief host, a world-class university is characterized by many things. Apart from teaching excellence, which we, ha we are doing here at KCA University, research, innovation, and extension, inaugural lecture is one of the hallmarks of a truly world-class university. I therefore want to really congratulate you, uh, our Vice Chancellor, 
because as somebody said two months ago or one month ago, everything rises and falls on leadership. Therefore, I congratulate also the School of Business for coming up with such a wonderful team during SOBAC 3. Vice Chancellor, in Agro Lectures, and I know you will expound on this, is when we celebrate the achievements, the academic milestones of a full professor appointed in a faculty in a university. We therefore want to, to celebrate you, uh, Professor Carolina Mulando, on this occasion. We adore you, and we are very honored that from today onwards, people will be able to say you are a professor of educational technology media at KCA University. We celebrate you, and we really thank your family for being here to witness this momentous occasion. As I finish, and as is supposed to be the tradition, this function is being watched world over because we are a world-class university. And it is being recorded. The reason why it is being recorded is that it will be on the university website. And anybody who will want to benchmark on how to organize a standard inaugural lecture with military precision, they'll be able to come to KCA University. <laughs> I therefore want to congratulate uh, you, Professor Mulando, and also to congratulate the VC. Vice Chancellor, you have provided the stable leadership. You have given this university community a stable leadership, a leadership that everybody is given an opportunity to be had. Everybody is given an opportunity to excel, to showcase their talents in a manner that leaves no one behind. With those few remarks, let us put our hands together and welcome our CEO and Vice Chancellor to please make his remarks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Vincent Onyuera. I want to recognize our chief guest this afternoon, none other than Professor Komulando. I'm learning to pronounce your names in the native way. I want to recognize my fellow vice chancellor who has traveled hundreds of kilometers from near Uganda to the city of Nairobi, Professor Peter Barasa. <laughs> Professor Charles Ongondo, Director and CEO at Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, has been a long time friend of this institution. It's not his first time to be here. We welcome you, sir, once again. I want to recognize our friends who have graced this occasion from the Republic of South Africa, led by, led by the Dean, Executive Dean of the Graduate School, Professor Tennessee and Company. At this juncture, I must disclose that I'm a professor extraordinary of the University of UNISA. And I've served in that capacity since 2015 until now. My fellow members of the University Management Board and Senate, the academic staff uh, who are present, the students who are present, other senior administrators from our university and those other universities that have graced this occasion and all distinguished members of the public, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say once again good afternoon and welcome to this very first 
inaugural lecture that my deputy has said it is being set as a standard for others to emulate. But I quickly remind him that the first inaugural lecture in the Republic of Kenya was given 57 years ago at the Royal College in Nairobi by Professor Alexander. That's history. And it is a tradition because nowadays at the onset of massification of education, we have people declaring themselves doctorate owners, professors by baptismal. And when you read their CV, it just contains their date of birth and a few errands they have been running in town. This being our first inaugural lecture, I think I must say that a professorial inaugural lecture is an opportunity to showcase an academic who has matured and given the highest rank in academia. We don't have any other rank. That is the highest rank we celebrate and listen to them, and by the time they finish telling us their story, we will stand and applaud. They are worth it, because they have been assessed internally, externally, by peers, and they have been found to qualify. And therefore, this afternoon, I am ordered to start before you to celebrate this significant milestone not only in the life of our sister, Professor Omulando, but also in the life of this university. This university started from a higher education college some 33 years ago, but it was given a charter 10 years ago, and now we are celebrating 10 years since we became a chartered university. And it is at this time we are celebrating the first full professor in the faculty in the name of Caroline Ann Akeo Anhinga Omulan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a few uh, a few things about the early life and education of Caroline. She was born on the 30th June in the year of our Lord, 1972, to the late Professor Silas Johnston Angoya Omulan and the late Mama Julia Awinja Shibairo Omulan, in a family of seven, and she is the first child. Professor Caroline Omulando has dedicated her life to the world of education. Her educational journey began at Kenyatta Primary, Kenyatta University Primary School, and Iregi Girls Primary School, followed by Bunyore Girls High School, where she completed a high school education in 1990. Her passion for education led her to pursue a Bachelor of Education Arts degree at Moy University. Completing the degree in 1996, specializing in English and literature for secondary school level teaching. academic achievements. Caroline continued her academic pursuit at Moy University, where she completed a Master of Philosophy in Educational Communication and Technology, with a focus on English language education. And this degree was completed in the year 2002. 
Her dedication and thirst for knowledge propelled her to achieve the highest level of academic recognition. And in the year 2009, she earned a Doctor of Philosophy, PhD in English Language Education from Moy University, solidifying her expertise in the field of education. Professor Caroline Omlandol professional journey has been marked by remarkable achievements and leadership roles in academia. She began her teaching career as a high school teacher in 1996 at DVC Secondary School and the Friends School Kamsinga. She later joined university teaching in 2006 at Masinde Moliro University of Science and Technology, where she served as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Language and Literature. Her passion for teaching and commitment to her students and academic scholarship were evident at that very early start. Later in the year 2010, she joined Moy University, where she continued her academic journey as a lecturer in the Department of Curriculum, Instruction, and Education Media. Her dedication to education and academic excellence was recognized. She advanced to the position of senior lecturer in the year 2013. In recognition of her expertise and excellence, in leadership abilities, Caroline's journey then took her to Alupe University in 2017 on secondment from Moy University as the founding dean of School of Education and Social Sciences. While at Alupe, in 2017, she got her promotion and appointment to the level of associate professor serving in the Department of Language and Literature Education. In 2023, Caroline joined the premier university, KCA University, where she holds the position of full professor in education in education media and technology in the Department of Education and Psychological Studies. Professor Omulado served in various capacities while at Masinde Moriro University of Science and Technology, including being the, Depart the Department Staff Welfare Committee Chair, HIV and AIDS Committee, Academic Advisor, and a member of the drama, or, or rather the patron of the drama club. At Moy University, she served in various capacities, some of them including at the school level, being the coordinator, learning resources and publications, editor Moy University School of Education Journal, the educator, and the Dean's List of Merit Award Committee, and at the departmental level, she was a coordinator of postgraduate studies, course coordinator, coordinating English language education and curriculum, monitoring and evaluation committee, and other notable activities included um, the revision of the B. Ed, that was the Bachelor of Education English curriculum, conference organizing committee, and development of the pedagogy in a university teaching program. Later, while at Alupe University, besides a dean, a being dean of school, she served in various capacities, among them being the chair of the Learning Resources and Research Committee, Strategic Planning Committee, Performance Contract pa Preparation Committee, Finance and Budgeting Reporting Committee, 
Corruption and Prevention Committee and University Higher Education Loans Board liaison officer. Her contribution to education and academia. Caroline's commitment to education goes beyond the classroom. She has supervised and mentored over 44, or at least 44, master students and at least 11 PhD students, guiding them, <laughs> guiding them to successful graduations. Her influence extends beyond her own institutions as she has served as an external examiner in many other universities. Her passion for education is also evident in her publications where she has made significant contributions to the field of teacher education and training, second language learning and teaching, applied linguistics, curriculum instruction, and education media and higher education. Her dedication to professional development is highlighted by her participation in various conferences, workshops, seminars, and training programs while she has both attended and facilitated sessions. Among the trainings, notable ones are the OSS REA faculty workshop on research methodology, International Dean's Course for Africa in 2019-2020 that was sponsored by the German Academic Exit Program, DAD, Capacity Building for the Kenya National Examinations Council, Stakeholders on Competency-Based Assessment in English, uh, gendering Policy, Engage Education Research in Africa by the Partnerships for Africa Social and Governance Research, PASGR, and Dialogue on Innovative Higher Education Strategies. National Multiplication Training Program and Training of Trainer Workshop by the German Academic Exchange Program. Caroline's commitment is further displayed through engagement in educational consultancies, notable among them are research and PhD capacities in Sub-Sahara Africa, Kenya project uh, sponsored by the British Council and the German Academic Exit Program, alignment of strengthening education systems in East Africa, professional course content, a project by the Aga Khan Development Network, a teacher development literacy curriculum development, a project on the development of an online advanced research methodology course, a project by the Organization of Social Science Research in Eastern and Southern Africa, training of primary school teacher of English, a project by Africa Education Trust, and the capacity building for teacher of English, a project by the Kenya Community Development Foundation. Alongside this, the main research grant project undertaken included the German DIES National Multiplication Training from 2021 to 2022, training on enhancing strategic leadership and the management of higher education institutions of higher learning in post-COVID-19 uh, era, and the German Rector's Conference and the Small Holder Crop Farmers Training Needs Identification in Teso South Sub-County of Busia County by Alupe University as principal investigator. Professional affiliations. In addition to our teaching and research roles, Caroline is an active member of several uh, professional and academic associations, and some of them include the following. Caroline is a member of the Association of Language Educators and Researchers, founder member and executive director. She is also involved in Distance, Open, and E-Learning Practitioners Association of Kenya, as an executive committee member. She is involved in Language Association of East Africa, 
African Network of Internationalization of Education and Organization for Social Science Research in Eastern and Southern Africa. Family. Professor Caroline Omulando is married to one Mr. Kennedy Ogora and Hinga, and they have four lovely children, Dan and Nahinga, Deborah and Nahinga, Dave and Nahinga, and Daisy and Nahinga. Finally, Professor Caroline Omlando's life and career are a testament to her unwavering commitment to family, to education, leadership, and the pursuit of knowledge. Our influence in the field of education in the Republic of Kenya and in the region is profound. And our legacy continues to inspire future generations of educators. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Caroline Omlando. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, kindly sit down. <laughs> yeah, after so many things have been said, I don't think I want to have each one of you standing up and just looking at me, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. Um, uh, of sharing with all of you what those years, there's that bit of information that I was able to word that is in that title. Because each of those words helps me walk the journey that I'm going to walk with you today. So that by the time we end, we should be able to be in a position to say, this is where we would like to go as a nation, as Kenya, as teacher educators in Kenya. This is the way we want to handle our teacher and more specifically, the teacher of English in Kenya, because that is where my passion is. Next slide. So that gives an overview of the issues that are going to be discussed here. I don't think we are going to go through that, because that gives us the journey through it. What we will do is to move on straight to the next slide. And on the next slide there, I talk about what is constructivism. And on that slide, I say, constructivism is not something that is new. I'm very sure anyone in this room has heard of that word before. Each one of us has interacted with that terminology, with the theory of constructivism. But how do we want to look at it today? We want to look at it because we are now in a world where there are so many advances in knowledge, so many advances in technology, and because of that, I want us to go through this and think about yeah, sorry. Uh, I want us to go through this and think about why constructivism and why constructivism in teaching, learning and teacher education. Thank you. And then why English second language education? So I want us to move through with those two questions as we go along so that we understand where I am coming from in terms of saying why focus on constructivism in the elements or issues of teaching, learning, and teacher education. And by extension, a focus on English second language education. So this theory, if we look at the words that are highlighted, if we are able to see the slides, if we pick out all the words that are highlighted on those slides, each one of them gives a description of what constructivism is. 
particularly in the context of education, in the context of learning, in the context of teaching, and in the context of teacher education. Constructivism is not static. So if we get the opposites of each of these words, then we'll know what constructivism is, all right? Or what it has forces to. Then we also are saying there, it is not passive, it is not fixed, and is subjective, all right? If we get again the antonym of subjective, we know it is objective. So it is not objective. Further on, we are saying that when we think about constructivism, we are thinking about a situation where we are delving into people's mindsets, how they think. Each one of us seated here thinks differently. Even while we listen to me and I say the same thing, each one of us is understanding it differently and interpreting it differently. Why? Because we have those mindsets where we have come from in terms of all the experiences we have gone through. They determine how we think and give meaning to what we, uh, we, uh, we meet. And we are further saying that according to constructivism, knowledge is a personal affair. So if I decide to define knowledge as A and you define it as B, provided I am able to prove that A is constructivist or constructivism or is knowledge and B is also knowledge, then that is fine. But as we go through this discussion, what we want to do is to begin creating some kind of uh, meeting points for us to say, while constructivism, constructivism, constructivism seems to give us a great latitude of thinking, why do we think we can get all this to converge, all right? So that slide explains all that. In the next slide, I want each one of us to look at it. Eh? And in this room today, I'm sure each one of us, either you have once been a student or you have once been a teacher. All right? Either you have once been a student or you have once been a teacher. For the teacher, like when I go for my classes, there's no way I'll go to class and then think that I will leave that class without my students understanding anything. Really, if I thought like that before I went to class, then I'm not an, a serious teacher, isn't it? Really, I'm not, or a lecturer. For each one of us, when we leave our offices, the spaces where we are moving towards a classroom, do what you want to do in that classroom, the only thing that is on your mind is that by the time I leave this class, after one hour, after 40 minutes, after two hours, my students will have understood. And that is what that teacher there is doing, and very confidently so, right? But what are the students saying? Hey, hey, what, what, Abu? <laughs> eh, I stopped listening after five minutes. <laughs> Another thing is saying, zii, ata sijaelewa kitu. Eh? Another is saying, I, I think I need to, ah, uh, we. <laughs> you know, there are all this, and another one has all these question marks wondering, so wh what are you asking? Have you said anything anyway? Right? But the next slide. So this is the journey we are walking through, all right? We are beginning to walk that journey of constructivism. But here is another classroom as we look into the future, where it's not just that teacher who goes to class, stands there, does things, and expects that all their students will understand everything they are saying. There is something we can do about it. If we look at that um, picture that is displayed, there's quite a bit I'm sure each one of us can relate to based on what is happening in our world today, isn't it? Quite a bit, particularly with the technology elements. And you can see those students look so comfortable, look so okay, they are moving on with what they need to do. But and then if we look at the teacher, you can see the teacher. The teacher actually is standing on a laptop like the one I have here, right? We can see the teacher, though not looking so human as such, but that is where our discussion is taking us today, as we think the, about the constructivist way of looking at teaching and learning. And of course, that will definitely influence the way we look at teacher education. 
So have these two pictures in mind as we move along. Remember, it's a journey we are taking and we have moving on, all right? So therefore, given those two pictures, the second one was a good demonstration of what a constructivist learning environment should look like, okay? And the constructivist learning environment, if we look at that figure, it says there's a lot of social interaction. And the social interaction that is happening is that between the facilitator and the students, students among students, and students with their gadgets. So that is where learning is moving to, and the age in which we are moving to. The other one there says, we are thinking about authentic tasks. Since we are looking at second language education, I would like to define the word authentic tasks and probably text from the context of language teaching. In a language classroom, when a teacher uses authentic material, it implies I should go to class with material that my students will relate to so easily because it reflects all that they, inter they interact with outside the classroom, okay? So when we think about authentic class tasks, what kind of tasks are we taking our students through? Are we just taking our students through tasks which when they finish the task, they behave like that first slide we had, eh? Where they are wondering, so what have you said? And so on. Or do you leave them in a manner that they are so engaged and they are enjoying the learning process? It is a challenging process and they can engage. Then we are thinking about technological media and we have also seen that in the other slide. That is an aspect of constructivism. And lastly there, exploratory. Are we allowing our learners to explore at whichever level of learning and teaching? so that they are able to explore, so that you're not like that teacher who stands there on stage or at the front of the class and says, I hope you have understood all this. Even allow them not even to ask, not even ask that question. Let them come to you and say, Mwalimu, we understood. And we understood because of the experiences A, B, and C that you took us through. So that is a constructivist learning environment. So having said all that, what appears there are, I would say, my icon authors, those who have helped me think the way I think over the years. It is not something I just woke up one morning and decided I want to be a constructivist. I want to have the constructivist way of thinking and looking at things. So we have the first one there, Krashen, and for Krashen, he focuses so much on second language acquisition, and second language learning. So the issues that he raises give a lot of information and background on how to understand a second language learner. So I have drawn a lot of my thinking about a second language learner from his work. And for Crash and for anyone who, is, who has studied language at whichever level at the university, this one is actually the father of uh, second language issues in the study of second language education. Then we have Oxford. Actually, my, my PhD thesis was centered around language learning strategies, and that is when my thinking changed even more. Because what I did was to go and investigate what are these things that learners do in class for them to be able to understand what they are teachers do in class with them. And I went through that journey, and if you got an opportunity to read my PhD thesis, then you would get an overview of what it is from the Kenyan context with issues of second language uh, learning strategies in English classrooms. Uh, then there's the other author who has also um, uh, uh, kind of defined the way I think, and that is Borg. And Borg looks at so much at the issues of teacher cognition in language teaching. Cognition has to do with getting into the mind of uh, the person. So again, in the discussion, we are going to look at that. The other one there looks at understanding language or language teaching, and he looks at what is referred to is in, in language context uh, post method. And again, we are going to look at that and how it has informed me in my thinking. Second last, we have a, a pair of uh, 
uh, of authors there who look at what is called technological, pedagogical content knowledge. So these particular authors move beyond the mind of the teacher and they move into looking at how technology, pedagogy, and content in the mind of the teacher interact for this teacher to be able to teach effectively. And lastly, we are calling the framework for 21st century learning. I know each one of us in this room, we talk about 21st century skills. And that is an issue now that has come up and we even have a theory that explains that. So, in, I think I'm going to talk much about this and then we see how we move on from here because this slide is what has now basically informed my thinking about who a second language learner is, all right? Who is a second language learner, particularly in the Kenyan context? That is why we want to focus on them. A second language learner, maybe if I would give a bit of background, because of the fact that they are learning another language in a new context, they are bound to experience certain challenges that a first language learner would not expect. For example, a child in uh, the US learning English as a first language will not experience similar problems to those as a child in Kenya learning English as a second language. So which are some of these things that I highlight in that slide? I'm saying one of the things that we have to grapple with is the learner learning processes or language learning processes. We also have to grapple with the issue of language learning environments. Our language learning environments, like for example in Kenya, is defined by so many things. Some of this, those are those that I have highlighted there. I have said, for example, multilingualism. Because of multilingualism, our learners experience a lot of challenges when they have to interact with English and be able to separate all these languages and how to come through uh, uh, effectively with English. They also have limited second language use. What does that mean? Because in our own home context, a lot of our children in our Kenyan context and maybe even African context encounter English only in school. Then when they get home, they now revert to those other languages. And because of that, they have limited use of the language and so what the teacher provides in school is only confined within the school setting. So that already becomes a challenge of second language learners. So how does the teacher handle that? Then we have also the aspects of the curriculum. Like right now, with all due respect to Professor Ongondo, we have the competency-based curriculum on board. We should now be asking at this point, what are the competencies, competencies skills, and knowledge that a teacher of English requires in order for them to effectively deliver the competency-based curriculum? Because then, that is an environment of learning. And this does not only apply to the, uh, the English as it was. So that as we are talking, let us begin thinking about this from a broader context of even we are about where we are thinking about the a teacher as it were. Then we might also be thinking about the instructional activities and so on. Then for language learning, what, from what Krashen talks about who a language learner is, he says personality affects the learner. So issues of personality. And in language they say that introverts learn language less faster compared to extroverts. Because language is a skill, language must be done. I can't learn it without doing it. And because of that, introverts tend to have more challenges than extroverts. Again, around literature, we have what we call learner individual differences and diversity. There I've mentioned a few like motivation. How are they motivated? What is their self-esteem? And what is their attitude? And what is their agenda? All these factors determine how a learner learns a language. Then we also look at the teacher. And in the Kenyan context, for us where we have a challenge with the teacher for English is, is that the teacher's knowledge and cognitions are defined so much by our own local context. And because they are defined so much by our own local context, and we are teaching a language we would want to brand foreign, not ours, now a second language, how are they able to conceptualize this? And because of that, then we are talking about second language teacher deficiencies. 
those are there because we are also, as teachers of English, second language users. We are also thinking about limited English second language schema. And again, I want here to define the word schema in the context of language, all right? In the context of language, when you talk about the word schema, schema implies all the experience and knowledge I have of the language and everything around me. So what is the limited schema they have here? The schema they have that is limited is the vocabulary, the communication, the competence, and over-dependence on their teachers. Why do we say over-dependence on their teachers? Because they have they, are all, they themselves are limited. They depend so much on their teacher. But the irony is the teacher they are depending on so much also has their own deficiencies as a teacher of second language, as it were. Then age is also another factor. So as we move through that, I want to skip the next slide. Let us move to slide 11. I want us now to look at who is a teacher of English in terms of teacher cognition. So we look at the elements of schooling, how far have they gone with their schooling? What levels of schooling have they gone and what experiences have they gone through? We also want professional work. Professional work implies all the professional courses they have gone through as a teacher and learned over the years. And then how do those two interact for them to be able to influence the classroom setting? That, remember we said teacher cognition has to do with what is happening in the teacher's mind. And so, all these are issues we may not be able, or rather issues we do not have control over. However, we are saying that they are issues which <clears throat> the teacher has to think about, conceptualize them in their mind and see how to uh, work around them to be able to come up with a classroom uh, situation that is effective. Alongside the teacher cognition, we have what we call TPAC. TPAC is a model where we have the issues of technology, the content, and the pedagogy of the teacher all converging to give what we call teacher knowledge. So then, given that that is the situation, I want us to move on to the next slide and look at how I put all this together as all the knowledge, that is slide 13, all the knowledge that the teacher uh, requires. So in my view, given the journey we have worked about teacher cognitions and teacher knowledge as referred to in TPAC, my summary of what is required of a constructivist teacher is pedagogical knowledge, subject knowledge, technological knowledge, language teacher professional knowledge, contextual knowledge, language learner knowledge, teacher efficiency, efficacy, self-efficacy knowledge, and exper experiential knowledge. So in my view, this is a diagram I've also created for myself to come up with what I conceptualize as the whole of what is a teacher's knowledge. And I borrow this from the two uh, models uh, of uh, teacher cognition and TIPA. So with this, I'm saying, if the teacher is able to allow all this to interact in measures they are able to determine themselves in their own learning environments because we are thinking about constructivism, then we should have that teacher we are calling the constructivist second language teacher base. So let us move on to slide 15. Slide 15. So slide 15 now gets us to the learner. We are done with looking at the teacher because that is the teacher I envisage as a constructivist teacher. But now we want to look at the learner. Who is this learner and how do we look at them? According to, uh, according to Oxford 1990, she came, up with, uh, she came up with a summary of what we refer to as language learning strategies. There are many others who have done this, but this particular one is one that speaks to most of what many of them talk about. She says that for any language learner to be effective, they need cognitive strategies, they need memory strategies, they need metacognitive strategies, they need compensatory strategies, 
They need effective strategies and they need social strategies. All these strategies put together, in my view, when I look at the teacher that we are describing and the diagram that I came up with, is they are the kind that the teacher should be able to understand the learner very well so that they are able to teach this learner more effectively. So as we look at that in terms of pedagogy, the next slide 16, we are saying that each learner has their own way of thinking. And because each learner has their own way of thinking and looking at the learning process, do we have a teacher that is able to dig into these teachers, into these students' minds, and be able to help this learner learn as they should be able to learn? And those are the issues that are presented on that slide, and you can see each one of them. And in the last line there, I say, for this to happen, then we require a teacher who is able to respond to changing, revising, restructuring a learner's learning language strategies worldview, all right? Why are we saying to restructure? So that depending on how I am thinking at that point, if it is not the most appropriate way for me to learn as a learner, how are you able to help me through that process, okay? So as we move along, now we are talking about second language teaching. And in second language teaching now, we are moving into the ideas of um, the, the, the author referred to as Kumarab Develu, 1994, at the bottom of the slide. We look at what he says. He says, for a teacher of English or language to be effective, they must be able to go beyond what is already structured and provided for. You must be able to get to a point where you are able to restructure and reconstruct that learning environment. And how do you do that? He says and explains that through what he refers to as the post-method pedagogy. So in the me post-method pedagogy, in the next slide, there's a summary of how it is looked at, okay? So according to him, he says that for this to be effective, we should have a situation where we have components, and these components are, one, it is particular. The teacher must be very particular about what they want to go and do in class. The teacher must be very practical about what they want to go and do in class. The teacher must also be very, uh, give opportunities for possibilities. You remember when we were looking at the constructivist uh, learning environment, we said that the teacher should allow the learners to explore the learning environment. And where the learner explores is where the element of possibility comes in. Do you allow your learners possibilities in class or are you that teacher who stands there and says, I hope you have understood everything? Do we teach to that point and you feel, I can leave my learners with space to also go and learn on their own rather than thinking that I am the owner of all knowledge in class? Then we have the roles of the teacher and roles of the student. And as regards the role of the student, we have already looked at the learning, learner language learning strategies, and it is those strategies that learners use. And if we read about the literature of learning strategies, it is not only in language. For those in language have been put aside because language works within the mind, as it were. However, even in our other learning subjects or areas of specialization, our learners also have learning strategies. Are we able to get into the minds of our learners to understand how they learn so that we are able to structure the learning environment effectively? Then we have talked about teacher knowledge. Remember we talked about teacher cognitions and we have also talked about technological knowledge, we have talked about pedagogical knowledge and we have also talked about content knowledge. All these being put together, then we are now building up to that teacher we are calling the constructivist teacher. Then, teacher educators, we are not left out, and uh, Dr. Siriaka here, I'm very sure, very passionate uh, about the issues of teacher education. I'm sure when we talk about teacher educators from all that we have said, what does that imply for us who, ed who actually educate students here at the university to become teachers? Those of us who educate teachers at teacher co training colleges to become teachers, what implications does, 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 does that have on what we do with them to mold them into those constructivist teachers? 
so that by the time they get to KICD where uh, Professor Ongondo is, Professor Ongondo and TSC are not complaining that we are producing teachers that are not able to deliver. So that is why we are here. Are we thinking about that in that context? So that we are saying, let our learners explore, let them problematize their own learning. Let us allow them out there, rather than keeping them here all the time. Let them not be, uh, um, would say, secluded within the four walls of a classroom. Are we able to allow them to move out of the four walls and do many other things out there that will help them learn better and understand who they are? So, Having said that, we are now moving into the 21st century pedagogy. Now that we have talked about post-pedagogy, post-method pedagogy, we have talked about teacher knowledge, we have talked about teacher cognitions, we have looked at who the learner is, and the learner learns by what is in their mind. So we are putting all this together. That is the story I am building. And we are asking ourselves then, what then do we need to think about? So as we think about a 21st century pedagogy, then we are saying the teacher should be able to teach contextually, from my right, contextually, and we have talked about the issue of context, isn't it? Where is the learning taking place from? Let the teacher consider both internal and external factors of the learning situation. Then, we should also be thinking about uh, interdisciplinary learning. And when we think about interdisciplinary learning, when we look at our curricula, both the 844 and the competency-based curriculum, for example, in Kenya, they talk about integrating contemporary issues into the curriculum, integrating issues that are pertinent in society, letting the learner know that there is no separation in the different subjects or learning areas that they are exposed to. Even for us here at the university, do we in such a way that when I go in for one class, I leave that class and I don't see any connection between that class and the other class. Are we able to create those connections for our students so that they begin seeing that everything they learn on daily basis is all interconnected and at the end of the day they are able to come out of the system as a whole person, rather than as, an, as a um, fragmented person in knowledge, where one says, like once in a while I'll go to class and, and ask a question, and I say, did you learn this course? Did you take this in, uh, learn this information? And students look at you like they've never even learned that before. And, and you're wondering. And when you ask them and go a little deeper into the specifics, then you begin seeing them do this. Like, oh, all right. So that is what you are referring to. That means they have not learned to create the connections between the knowledge that they learn in their classroom. Are we able to help these teachers see, rather these students see that what they learn in course A, what they learn in course B, and learn in the other are all interrelated in that manner. So let us see how that then creates, that is now the constructivist teacher. Then working, helping our students work collaboratively. How many times do we allow our students to work on their own? There are times even as teachers we feel very unsafe when our students are working on their own. We feel like they are not able to control their own learning processes and their own learning context. Okay? As we think through this, we are also thinking about projects, project-based learning, and that I've talked about it already. Let the students do a lot of projects and do a lot of problem solving. And then transparency. Teachers have the habit of making students feel assessment is a punishment. Mitawashika, mitawapata, you're not attending class. You know, the kind of things we like saying as teachers, isn't it? And we do that even up to the university where you say, you're not attending class, mitakushika wakati wakat. Why are we catching them? I usually ask, are we policemen? We are not, isn't it? We are not policemen, we are teachers in that classroom. So why don't we make assessment also enjoyable for the learners, yeah? Let them understand why we are assessing them. Give them a task, take them through the task. Let them understand why they are doing that task. And you can be sure we will have better assessment grades. 
and grades of students who understand why they have to go through the assessment rather than students taking a cut, taking an assessment and only waiting for the day we come back with the papers to say na ulianguka kwa nini ulianguka ni kwa sababu ukuji class you know and that kind of thing then we have let us help our students develop thinking skills and that connects so much so much to the nature of assessment we expose them to and to the nature of teaching processes that we take them through are we able to help our students learn to think through the processes so here we now have what I'm describing in the next slide as the 21st century teacher. So for this teacher to be able to do all those things that we have described in the previous slide, the teacher should be one who one is professional, is able to focus on student-centeredness, is able to focus on differentiated instruction. Differentiated instruction means I don't take my students as a whole set in that classroom. Am I able to identify those who need more help from me? Am I able to identify the first learners whom I need to give more tasks to move faster? Rather than moving with all of them as a group. That is when we lose a lot of students on the way. And when we read so much about the competency-based curriculum, it actually lies within this way of thinking. Besides that, we are thinking about linking pedagogy content and technology in the world of technology today we can't leave out technology how is the teacher able to appropriate the content they have how is the teacher able to appropriate their pedagogical skills to be able to facilitate the teaching and learning process using technology and that is very important of course learning and assessment i have already talked about that so what we look at there next is the 21st century framework for learning. It actually almost summarizes all the things that we have talked about today. It is a framework that was developed in 2007. And in the red space, they talk about us being able to help our students develop life skills and career skills, what we probably call soft skills, all right? The soft skills, there's a lot of complaint that many of our graduates lack soft skills. Are we able to help our learners along learning the so many things they learn to also learn soft skills? Because those are very important in the marketplace, in the industry today. Besides that, when we look at the yellow space up there, it talks about the issues of learning, innovation skills, all right? Are we able to help our students to become critical thinkers? develop good communication skills, learn collaboration skills, and be creative through their learning processes. And if we think through the many things that we have said today, if we are able to pay attention to those issues, then we are able to help our students do those in their, in their, in class, in their classrooms and beyond their classrooms. In the blue space on the extreme of my right, we have what is referred to as information, media, and technology that can't be left out. In fact, we are now moving into a world where technology is going to become the driver of all that we do. And in the next few slides, I would like us to begin thinking because we have had all these debates about this technology and how it's now beginning to do for us as teachers so many things. How should we look at it? And all that determines how we all we do as teachers in the school and learning environment. Because of what we have just said, this is where now we come. The next slide. There, there are questions, and I just want us to quietly read them as you think through, because this is now forming kind of the, is wrapping up our thinking in thinking about a constructivist teacher. Okay? It's wrapping up that. So what do we think at, about artificial intelligence? Are we ready to embrace it? Those are the things happening. Are we ready to embrace it? I want us to move on now to slide 25 because it gives another summary, slide 25. Yes, that one. So that gives us a summary of what we should be thinking about artificial intelligence in the context of technology and education. All right? So what are we saying? We are saying that in the eyes or in the era of AI and education, we are thinking about a facilitative teacher 
that is the constructivist teacher. We are thinking an, about an autonomous learner, that is a constructivist learner. We are thinking about technology designed and driven learning, that is a constructivist learning environment. So are we ready to embrace all this, put them together and have those kind of learning environments that we desire to have? Because that is where the world now is taking us. So as we move on, I want us now to look at uh, slide 29. Slide 29, as we summarize, slide 29 now summarizes all that we have talked about. We will get an opportunity to read through the slides where we may have missed out on some uh, specific information or details. But what we see now is my own creation. This is the model that I have now come up with which I am saying, if we want to have that constructivist teacher, what kind of teacher then should we be thinking about? In the middle of the circle, I put, teacher, the, I put there the language teacher and the language teacher education curricula. Why do I put that, those at the center? Because the teacher is usually the one who drives the entire teaching and learning process. Remember when we began? I said I was focusing on the constructivist perspective towards learning, teaching, and teacher education. So now, as regards teacher education, I'm putting the teacher and the issues of the teacher education curriculum at the center. Because once we have the right curriculum for teachers, then we will also be able to produce the right teacher. And that right teacher will be able to interact with the learners in the second uh, circle. If you look at the second circle, I'm now describing the learner that we have been talking about. And it's a learner who has a lot of diversity, a learner who has their own learning styles, a learner who learns using their own strategies. Are we able as, as teachers to look into that learner? If we produce a teacher who is a constructivist right from the center of the circle, then we should be able to do that. In the third level, I now look at the 21st century learning skills. I look at instructional technologies because that is where we are now in the world. And I also look at AI, which is artificial intelligence and the unique and dynamic language learning environment. All these put together help us to see that constructivist learning environment, okay? And lastly, we are saying, if all those work well, then at the periphery, we have the teacher who now we are calling the constructivist second language teacher practice or teacher for that matter. So this, I would say, is what I have learned over the years and a model which I have actually developed as I was thinking through this entire process. And as we come to the end, I say in the last slide, that I am now working towards refining this model to be able to have it published, to be able to inform issues of teacher education, teacher training, not only in Kenya, but also internationally. And besides that, as I was thinking through, I said these slides were very rich. I'm also thinking that I could work through the publication of an academic book which can be used to inform issues of teacher education in Kenya. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a standing ovation, please. Let's clap well now. Don't leave the podium. Kindly just stay at the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Emily, with your permission now, I'd like to invite the Vice Chancellor to come to the podium to gift our very first full professor of KCA University from the School of Education, <laughs> uh, uh, School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences. This very special moment, a gift. Uh, can we have uh, the gentleman at the back to kindly help us? Uh, 
Yeah, Emily, those shoes are expensive. Let them mend. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. And now we'd like to invite the family to come to the front. We'd like to invite the family to kindly come and enjoy this photo. And then we'd like to invite the DVC, FPD, and DVC Rio to also come to the front after that. So the family, kindly join them first. Yes. Okay. Official photographer. Okay. Great. I'd now like to invite the two DVCs to join us, Professor Damian and Professor Nyuera. Okay, that other photo. Gentlemen, can we have that uh, days down? We will have it back shortly. Just one more. Photographers, are you sure you... Okay. Uh, let Christine uh, arrange our guests so that this is a uh, one-in-a-lifetime photo. All right. Christine, is the photo perfect? Great. Okay, we'd now like to invite the vice chancellors in the house. <laughs> and other guests, we'd like to invite Professor Barasa. Peter, we'd like to invite Professor Charles Ongondo to this photo. We'd like to invite Dr. Shiriaki Gitonga and Dr. Jacob Nyongesa to come to this photo. Kindly, there's more space this other side. Yeah, there's more space this other side. What matters is Professor Mulando is at the center. <laughs> All right. We'd now like to have our Dean of School of Education because it is our school. Kindly join the photo. Okay. We, ha we can have chairs very fast. Okay, the gentlemen in the house, we can have chairs on the stage very fast. Yeah, the, the gentlemen, those are not gentlemen, it's okay, but the gentlemen. <laughs> yes, just a few, like, yeah, those are good. So we can have uh, a few seats and the others stand at the back. No, no, th those are enough, not too many. Not all of them sitting, just a few seats at the front. Prof, sit at the front. The vice chancellor. Uh, I'm forgetting the name, but uh, uh, yeah, Professor's uh, honor. The honor of Professor Molanda. <laughs> yeah, that is the only man who owns Prof more than us. Yeah? yeah, okay. All right, let's have that perfect photo for our calendar, KC University 2024. Uh, Christine, any, any other further guidance? We'd now like to have... <laughs> I was waiting. I didn't want to call myself there. <laughs> so, oh. All right, we can have our guests sit down, then members of faculty. Okay, School of Education, that is us. Yeah.
next we shall have um, our members of uh, UMB and uh, the team from UNISA joining for the photo. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now have UMB. Uh, UNISA can, uh, we can have the professor for that photo, then UNISA will join us after that. Let's have that photo, then members of the UMB kindly join that photo. UMB. Okay. Already the three gentlemen have represented UMB. We'd like to invite other members of the Senate who are in the house, kindly join that photo. Members of the Senate in the house. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm simply saying members from other schools. Oh, our, 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 we'll have that photo. Yeah, then, then you can leave. Then we'll call Eunice again. But thank you for joining our UMB. Photographers, thank you very much. All right. Now, we'd like to say... Uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, on the stage. The Vice Chancellor, we'd like to request you to stay there a little bit more, but we'd like to request the others to sit down. And then we'd like to request the gentlemen once more to very fast return the seats to where they are. Okay, we now like to invite Professor Tennyson Gusini, the Executive Dean College of Graduate Studies, UNISA. We'd like to ask you to, to greet us, since that is where our Vice Chancellor and CEO got his professorship. We have to allow you to honor him. Welcome. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, congratulations to our inaugurant. Uh, this is an exceptional achievement. Hey, people, uh, you should see some of our inaugural speeches that we have uh, at our parent university. Generally, people are, are very close to retirement when they get it. You look way too young for that. So. You've, you've definitely done something very exceptional. And to the KCA management, in every sense of the word, I, we are very honored to have come. We, we came with the intention of exploring collaborative potential. Uh, we had a very um, prescribed meeting where we knew what we thought we were going to discuss. And I listened to your presentation and I could see so many additional possibilities so i hope somewhere in your aspiration of publishing a book you will consider collaborating with unisa we are by um, we are the biggest university in africa and the one of the world's 10 biggest universities so that's an invitation to you uh, we thought it would be a little bit improper of us to come here not bearing any gifts these gifts had two functions if if we didn't succeed in 
selling our original proposition of academic scholarship, we were going to use them as forms of bribery. But <laughs> we don't need them for that, thankfully. So we would like to, to, uh, to thank uh, your VC, who is actually uh, one of us in a shape or form. And, and this message to all is that as an academic, you are a citizen of the global academic space. So uh, this condition and situation he finds himself in should really be the norm rather than the rare uh, exception. And when we finalize our MOU with you, we will be inviting you in every shape and form to be professors of one kind or another. Of course, a professor extraordinaire, which you are, is a very rare accomplishment, but uh, we can always aspire. Thank you. Just climb uh, back to the stage. Uh, uh, Prof, uh, we'll request you guys to come slightly this way so that uh, the podium does not bar this beautiful photo. We'd now like to invite our two DVCs to join the stage so that uh, this, is, this gift to KC University is witnessed. And our director of graduate school. All right. Okay, yes, colleagues from UNISA, kindly join this beautiful photo. Colleagues from UNISA. We can see they are celebrating 150 years and we are celebrating 10 years. It's okay. All right, more seats again. <laughs> All right, let's take another beautiful photo for our calendar. Unisa, we promise to send you this photo for your calendar too. Christine? Okay. That is Christine Mutegi, our corporate officer. She wants every photo to look very good. Okay. And you're not in the photo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we can now have a seat. Thank you very much. Can the gentlemen return the chairs very fast again? We are getting to the near end of our very great event. And I like the way time has been kept today. We are going to end the event very early on time before anyone gets anxious. Yes, you can say something. You know, it's your house, so... Teachers, <laughs> teachers love talking. 
I just want to say thank you so much to the team from the University of South Africa, uh, popularly known as UNISA. I think there's somebody said there's no coincidence in this world. Yeah, it's a philosophy. It was just meant to be. Uh, you have heard that we are a young university, just a decade old. The MC has just mentioned uh, the University of South Africa celebrating 150 years. Just try to imagine. Uh, the largest university in the in African continent. But I don't know in South Africa why you like saying South Africa and Africa. But, uh, that's another debate for another day. But within the African soil, UNISA is the largest university. And it's basically an open and distance learning facility. I just want to say, coincidentally again, Professor Mulando is our first director in the Directorate of Open and Distance Education. So you will be hosting profs, you'll be coming to your office one of these fine days to learn how to be number two in Africa. Because number one is already, t see Menda. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you so much. Interact with our faculty. We are not as large as uh, UNISA, but uh, we are doing bigger things than UNISA. So we are number one that side. So thank you so much to each one of you. Uh, in my other capacity, um, extraordinary professor of the University of South Africa in uh, agricultural sciences, even as late as this morning, I was actually writing to the school about a postgraduate student. Um, we have interacted with some of you, Professor Bosire there. He's been uh, uh, my uh, acquaintance a while in uh, Pretoria. Otherwise, uh, feel free, stay. This is Kenya, you don't need a visa, so don't be in a hurry to go. Uh, you can go anywhere freely and see our villages. This uh, uh, President Dalitoa visa, South African visa. So we are one community. So for Professor Mulando, we are proud of you to showcase. Eh? He is Professor Yakuo Nekana Kwa Gazeti Pekeake. You have had a solid testimony as an academic. And we are here to say that we are on the highway to success. Thank you so much indeed. And to our visitors who grace the occasion, Professor, uh, all the way from our Institute for Curriculum Development, uh, Professor Peter, uh, all the way from Alupe. Thank you so much, colleagues. And uh, everyone else, Atawati and Nyumbani, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Before you leave on stage, as you always do, don't think we forgot. We have gifts for your visitors. Yeah, so we'd like to invite uh, the three guests as they are seated there. So we'll start with uh, Professor Ongondo. Camera. Podium, gentlemen, kindly. And, and uh, we will not need the podium again. You have kindly not. All right. Okay. And that is Professor Peter Barasa, Vice Chancellor, Alupe University. Then we have got Professor Tennyson Gusini. I hope I get it right. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thank you, Vice Chancellor. You can now sit down. Yeah, you know, this is the only time I can order my boss to do something. 
What an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also just like to take this moment to invite Professor Peter Barasa, Vice Chancellor Alupe University. Uh, those who don't know Professor Peter Barasa, to some of us in the drama fraternity, he has been a great mentor to us. He has, uh, we have sat with him in some panel. I remember the very first time I adjudicated the drama festivals, I sat with him on a panel and every time I was like, Prof, which one is this? Like, and he showed me very well. So thanks for your guidance and we really appreciate it. It's such an honor to have you here, not just as a guest of KC University, but as a mentor to many great people in the education fraternity. Welcome. Kieti, friend to me and the family, our VC, DVC research, our chief guest, uh, Professor Carolina Mulando, the family of Professor Carolina Mulando. In 1998, a man of very medium height came to my office. I was just newly employed at Moore University and said, will you accept to teach my daughter for her masters? I said, I'm new. For me to teach, I should be able to consult the person in charge of the program. So I went to Dr. Jane Campbell and asked Dr. Jen Campbell, can we take a student for a master's program? And she said, how many? One student. And she said, no, we can't waste our time. We will not do that. The man, same man I'm talking about, found me walking to the eatery where people pay 300, 400 shillings for lunch. And he told me, where are you going? I said, I was going for lunch. He said, you know you're going to pay 300 shillings at the eater. I can take you where you'll eat and be satisfied for 60 shillings. Please follow me. So we went with him, and he bought me two chapatis, and, my, and I was extremely satisfied. And I knew where to eat the next day. The person I'm talking about was Professor Silas who is the late father of Professor Caroline of Lando. From that time, I've seen a young scholar grow. I've seen a young academic grow. And today I stand here proudly to thank KCA for icing the cake. Ladies and gentlemen, in our midst is a man called Professor Charles Ocheng Ongondo, whom I also saw at Moi University when he came for his undergraduate to do English education. And later on, I sat with him in class, teaching him when he was doing his master's. And today, I benefit from the knowledge of these two individuals. When I say I'm a professor, I think a third of my publications have been written with Professor Caroline Omulando, and about a tenth of my publications have been written by, with Charles Ocheng Ongondo. In essence, what I'm saying is that when you grow people, they grow you. When you grow people, they grow you. I listened to professor speaking a few minutes ago, and I told myself, who is the teacher here? I felt I was in the presence of somebody now 
greater than I am in terms of thinking about language education. Many people called us applied linguists. But when Ongondo was in uh, Britain at Leeds University, he told us, let's read some of these new texts. And I was teaching then some class, their class PhD. There were seven people in their class. One certainly passed on. But all of them became deans of the schools of education across this country. And when I walk in the schools of education, I find deans schools of education, courtesy of another person who went elsewhere, said, take these books, share with your class. Let's develop a program. The PhD program I developed, he was in Leeds. Said, let's work on it together. They sat in class and did that. What is my sorrow about all this? My sorrow is that I lost a deputy vice chancellor in charge of academics, research, and student affairs at Alupe University. That is what she was going to be. That is what she was earmarked to be. But then God and one man called Kindiki <laughs> appeared and took away our DVC. But don't worry. There is always a path to greater things. You have great people here. You have a great family now with you. And I want to say this to Ken. Thank you to the children. Dan. <laughs> you think I've forgotten. I couldn't have. I cannot. Let me just say the girls, David. I am sure that you have seen your mom grow. And I'm sure wherever your, great, your grandfather, your grandmother are, they look up there and smile. Where your Aunt Kristen is, she looks and smiles and says she has done what we would have wanted her to do. But colleagues, when we have said this, Carol has raised issues that language educators must relate to. Sitting here is Dr. Siriaka, whom we call the Dean of Deans. She was my colleague in the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform. And our concern is very serious about teacher education. Among you here, there are people who believe in Kiswahili language. And you all say, Kiswahili kitukuzwe. Manake ni luga ya nini? Ya taifa. We have no quarrel with Kiswahili. Kiswahili has lived off English to be able to do its linguistics, morphology, lexicology. Without English, Kiswahili would still be struggling with certain things in terms of academics. So English has no war with Kiswahili. In fact, sisi twakipenda Kiswahili, twakihenzi Kiswahili, lakini lugha ambayo inatupa chakula sisi tunajivunia ni Kiingereza. Na ni lugha ya kimataifa. Sasa nyinyi jengeni Kiswahili tutembe let's pace each other in excellence tuache kulialia kwamba Kiswahili Kiingereza kina uh, uh, hasha hatuna neno kama hilo but for us she has raised issues of pertinent issues how do we deal with the preparation of the language teacher the difference between me and my colleagues in Busia in Maliki village there are those who didn't understand English, and they are still there. I understood the language, used the language, and got to where I was. It was a bridge to where I am. So let's not cheat ourselves. Our children need this language. For as long as our curriculum is expressed in that language, and those are the issues she's raising here. How do we make it possible for these children, through their teachers, to understand what they do in class. The only thing that bothers me, Carol, and I can't sit down without see, saying this. You see, uh, CEO, that is Charles Ongondo and the team, talk about 100% transition in this country. No child left behind. Which means a teacher of biology, a teacher of English, a teacher of Kiswahili has 100 kids in a classroom. And you are telling me it has to be differentiated learning. You are telling me I should create 
technologically available processes and environment for this child. We need to have that discussion. This discussion must continue. And I would like you to have the opportunity to have that discussion with CEO at KICD, have that discussion with Siriaka. She has the deans of education meeting this week so that we can lift this that you have said that Professor Kindike has given you an opportunity to express and take it out there and let's talk about it and talk seriously about the opportunities for every child in this country. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as I sit down, I want to say I'm extremely proud to stand here for two reasons. First, that I have learned. That is one reason good enough. I came, I learned. I've been educated. I've been received very well. Thank you so much. The second reason is very obvious, that I was listening to a scholar who is a lady. That is critical for me, a scholar who is a lady. We are afraid to grow scholars who are ladies. Zippy, what can I tell them about you? What can I say about her? You grow the ladies and see how the community around you changes. If we don't grow the ladies, I read something today in one of the professional worlds, and somebody said, thank you for coming to Teso. I'll give you a lady. I was offended. I was offended. I was extremely offended. Extremely offended. Let's grow ladies. Let's grow our daughters. Let's grow our mothers. If you don't grow them, if you get scared of them growing, then we shall stagnate. They must grow. This is the future for us. This is where we are going. I want to thank Professor Kindiki again for accepting to work together with my sister Damiana Kieti, who are deans together at Moi University when deans were deans, when we, yes, we controlled a budget of over 800 million as deans, uh, a dean, and I could pay myself my salary on top of the salary. <laughs> Contract with the VC, give me 900, you pay yourself 200 shillings, 200,000 per month, and I produce. Gave you this, gave them the students and put the money in my pocket and built my people. Carol, you have a home. We will not come for you from Alupe. We swear, we will not sit here. You have a home, work. You are very lucky to be the first professor, full professor here. What we couldn't give you for reasons that you know, you have now got it, so settle serve the institution with every bit of your ability and trust me Odell is not enough for this lady it isn't because she did more than that for us and when I was dean she had more than four positions within the school so if you give her one you'll be wasting her Odell is not enough Colleagues, Asante Sana, Deborah Usishangai, Kwavila Olifikian Mesao Jina, Suezu Kusao Jina. I have seen one of our other relatives, Yuko Api, Yuko Pale, Memuona, that is also a relative. So thank you so much. Finally, Yunisa, please don't stop here. Yunisa, do not stop here. Please come to Busia. We will take you to the source of the Nile. It is just a cross in Uganda. The source of the Nile, which Egypt screams about, we shall tell, take you there. We shall take you to see the strong man of Africa, Mseveni. He's just a neighbor. When we want to talk to him, we simply make a call. 
but when you go back to South Africa, say hello to many friends of ours, our friends in the Pretoria, uh, Professor Chihole, uh, Chika, and I have sons who went to South Africa for studies, so I know a bit of South Africa. Karibuni tena, karibuni sana, come again and come again, build that relationship, but extend it to Alupe University. They are 10 years old. We are only five years old. So you can see, we are easier to carry than a 10-year-old child. Asante sana, Mexiboku. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I can testify to you as a young mother that it is easier to walk with a 10-year-old child than a five-year-old one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say, Caroline, since this might be my very last time to talk to you, it is such an honor to have been the MC of the day in this very first inaugural event for KC University as a professorial, uh, the first professorial lecture at KC University. And for you, coming from our department, having been such a great mentor for us, it's such an honor. So thank you so much. Yeah, and now I'd like to invite Hedwig. Hedwig Umbuda is the chair of Department Educational and Psychology Studies School of Education Arts and Social Sciences. And when Prof joined us in March, I want to remember it was in March, right? It was a beautiful moment. We were like in that department, women are the leaders and now we had another woman coming to join the men are there but there are very few we overpowered them and uh, we just want to say thank you uh, to the dvc uh, uh, professor damiana uh, professor onyera and to the vice chancellor that you lead by example that in this university women are forming two-thirds in leadership. You have made the gender role something very practical, as her speech talked. So at this very moment, Hedwig, you are going to say the final words for the day. And as she comes and says the final words, I'd like to tell you that you don't live very fast because at KCA, we cannot let you stay here hungry that long. We are going to be having refreshments right out there. As the refreshments are going on, we will be having some interviews right in here, starting with Professor Molando, Professor Wakindiki, and the DVCs. Then uh, us, the others, may join. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite Hedwig to come and join us. I am lucky and honored to be the one moving this vote of thanks for my own sister who joined us early this year. So our guest of honor, my sister, Professor Caroline Umblando, invited guests, our VC and CEO, DVCs, deans, visitors from UNISA, Professor Caroline Umblando's family, uh, KCAU staff and the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences staff. Good evening. You know me, I am Hedwig. I have been hosting professor in the Department of Education and Psychological Studies. And today, I am just happy that the whole KCA fraternity has shared what Professor Mlando has to offer. So as I sat there, I was very thankful to you, Vice Chancellor and CEO, for allowing my department to employ a professor of great repute. So I am grateful to you, VC and CEO. You are the first person that I am thanking. Secondly, I also want to thank the DVC, Rio, Professor Vincent Onuera, I happened to be in the earshot when you mentioned 
to Professor Mlando that she had to do this, <laughs> what she has done today. And thank you, Professor Sister, for taking the challenge. We are following you. Professor uh, Damiana Kieti, I'm also very grateful to you, especially after Zippy mentioning that there's something to be chewed out there. I know that that is uh, within your docket. And also for being present here. And though you are a professor too, you are here and keenly listened to what Professor Caroline Omblando taught us. Um, I want to thank you, Professor Caroline Omblando, as a teacher of English. I really wished I would have had an opportunity to listen to you around 2000, 2001, when I was just starting teaching, because I taught in village schools where teaching English is really a hard nut to crack. And I know that those of you who are following the conversation and those of you who are in the languages, you followed through the discussion and you are enriched. Thank you so much, Professor. And also for showing KC University that this is possible, we shall carry on. I must also thank the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences for always working as a unit, sticking together in the leadership of our Dean, Dr. Priscilla Gashigi. I'm very grateful. I know you've had lots of meetings uh, with the, the DVC Rio and the Rio Division to make this a successful day. Our own MC, Dr. Z.P. Okoth, I will not forget you. I remember one day Rogers challenged us that when we move votes of thanks, we never remember the MC. We remember you, you are one of our own, and you save us a lot of money. Thank you. And to the rest of you, the KCF fraternity and other people who I may not have mentioned, it is not that we are taking you for granted. Brother Michael Ingutia, thank you in your capacity. I saw Masi Epiche making calls frantically just before this, and many of you that I saw running around, thank you so much on behalf of the School of Education, Arts and Social Sciences. God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not supposed to come back here anymore, but Christine, the floor is now yours. Uh, I'd like to request Christine. Christine, where are the interviews? Here or there? Okay, then I'd like to request everyone to use the other entrances since the interviews will right, be right here at the center. Thank you so much. We'll start with uh, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki as uh, Professor Caroline greets us and takes selfies with us before we call her there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zippy. So we'll have uh, Professor Caroline Omulando, our two DVCs, our VC and CEO, uh, VC Alupe University, and uh, Professor Charles Ongondo remain behind for a quick chit chat with the media.